This is part two of my Blender tutorial on how to create an animated cartoon fire. This is the same setup we ended the last tutorial with. And we'll pause this. I'm going to make some changes in the viewport so we can better see the shader as we work on it. So I'm going to go to the world properties and you can see our color for the background is gray. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to drag this down to change it to black. Then I'm going to go to the overlays menu and open that up and I'm going to turn off grid, floor, and XYZ. And then I'm going to turn off the 3D cursor. The only thing we'll see in the viewport are the meta balls. To see those changes, I'm going to go up to shading and click rendered. Now that we've clicked that, we can't see the meta balls because there is no illumination in the scene and they don't have a shader on them. Now I'm going to go to the timeline and at this drop down for editor type, I'm going to change that to shader editor. Then with fire selected, I'm going to go to the texture tab and click new to create a new texture. I'm going to click in the name field and change that to cartoon fire. Now back in the node view, you can see Blender has created a shader for us. This cartoon shader is going to be very simple, so we don't need the principled BSDF. So I'm going to click on that node and hit delete. We do need the material output node. Let's click Shift A to open our add menu and search. And I'm going to type in color ramp. The only other node we need is a Fresnel. So I'm going to hit Shift A again to bring up the add menu, search. Fresnel. The Fresnel node typically drives the reflectance you see on a surface based on the angle of you viewing it. In our setup, the Fresnel is going to drive the banding that you see in the cartoon flame that I created. So I'm going to connect the Fresnel node to the color ramp, and then I'm going to connect the color ramp to surface on the material output. You now see in the viewport that a shader has been applied to the fire metaball. And you can see that the outside is white and the interior is gray, so it's more of a gradient and that's not what we want. So if we go to the color ramp node where it says linear, let's change that to constant. And now it looks like that it's completely black again, and that's because the color ramp is black. But if I grab the white swatch and drag it to the left, you can see the banding starting to show. With the white swatch still selected, I'm going to click into the white field and change that to a red. Then I'm going to click the black swatch and change it to a yellow. And I'm not using exact color here, I'm just guessing to what looks good. So now you can get some control with the banding if you just move the color ramp swatches. So you can see as I move that around, it changes. But that only works with the Fresnel node. If I disconnect the Fresnel node and then drag the red to the right, you can see you don't get the banding. It just switches at the halfway point from red to yellow. So I'm going to connect the Fresnel back to the color ramp. If you click in the IOR field of the Fresnel, you can drag back and forth, and that'll adjust the color banding. I'm going to set mine to 0.85. Now if I hit play by hitting the space bar, you can see how that looks. And that looks good. But if you look at the final version that I created and showed at the beginning of this tutorial, you'll notice I have a third band. So I have a red and then a yellow and then a lighter yellow. So to do that, I want to select the Fresnel and Color Ramp by dragging the left mouse button and grabbing them both. Then I'm going to hit Shift D to create a duplicate and drag my mouse down to pull those apart. Now I need a mix node, so I'm going to hit Shift A for my add menu, and I'm going to search for Mix RGB. Hit Enter. Now I'm going to disconnect the Color Ramp from the material output, and I'm going to add it to Color 1 on the Mix node. And I'm going to take the color from the new color ramp and add it to color 2. Then I'll connect color from the mix node to surface on the material output node. I'm going to leave the red swatch, the color it is, but I'm going to change the yellow swatch. So I'm going to make that a little lighter. Now if I change my second Fresnel to 0.65 and my first Fresnel is still 0.85, you can see I've created that third band. And this is the look I wanted. The only remaining thing that I showed in my original example is there is a glow around the fire. 
I'm not sure I'm going to use that in my tune boom animation, but I will show you how I did that in case you want to use it in your project. One thing to remember is this does require Eevee as your render engine. I think you can do a glow in cycles, but this is for a setup using Eevee. To add the glow, I'm going to open my render properties and check the checkbox next to bloom. As soon as you check it, a glow is added, but it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to open the drop down and adjust a few of the settings. The ones I ended up using were zero for threshold, radius 3.75, and finally intensity 0.1. I think that looks good, and that's the end result I was going for. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.